It's it's as it works in cartoons. You can slice a fireball. Of course you can. What do you think the sword was for? I'm going to do a speech again. Ladies and gentlemen, after many moons, after many years, after many decades, we gather here back to see the world premiere of a live action avatar that will hopefully break the internet all over again. And we will re-experience the true journey that we were always destined to. The firing machine is embarked on the dark path. And the world might never recover. Okay, we see, we've seen this. It, it, it doesn't want to stay there. It needs you, Aang. Okay, that's the same motif. The Fire Nation has destroyed everything in their path. If the world is gonna have any chance, it's gonna need Aang. Okay. Right. El Bozo. The savior of the world. So they they replicated the intro in the episode. I chased down every hint of the Avatar. Destiny. I'm not someone who can stop the Fire Nation. That. I don't want the responsibility. You don't have to do this alone. That looked like the storm. Me, Tara, and a flying ball of fur. What more do you need? <laughs> there she is. What it is we're really fighting for. Okay, they're they're just giving us everything. We're gonna go through this so many times. Love. He was at Omashu! Was he doing an Omashu? I'm gonna save the world. With my friends. There's got there's gotta be a pro there's gotta be a post trailer bit, right? Come on. Is that it? Is there gonna be a post trailer bit? No, I don't think there is. Okay, listen. Let's begin. Let's begin. I hope Pang is fun and not serious. He he literally face planted into a statue. I think it's fine. <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> Alright. Alright. This is either Zuko's fleet or this is already the Siege on the North. It could be either or because there are a lot of ships. This is a lot of ships for it to just be a random scene. This is obviously Heibai. The Heibai Forest. Look at this. This right here is what they talked about. We're gonna actually see, I don't want to say the word, we all know what it is, of the Air Nomads. Which I think is a very good call, I've talked about it before. I think this is a really, really good call to show this in depth. I think it's gonna ground the series, I think it's gonna make um, everything the Fire Nation does hit infinitely harder. Especially for a medium like uh, live action. The world needs the Avatar. Yeah, this is gonna be so cool. So this is Roku. So this must be the solstice, right? Are these the solstice gates? I think so, right? Because the doors are the doors are broken down. So I assume this is this is Roku coming out of the uh, coming out of the coming out of the thingy. Maybe not, because I would assume for him to be like more spirity. This this could be a flashback of some sort. It needs you, Aang. That feels majestic. All right, so that's just Ozai. In Obviously, a big part of the discussion has already been that we know Ozai's face. I am like I get the I get the I get the argument of we never saw him in uh, in the animation until season three, right? The whole point of Ozai is that he's always kept in the shadows. He's a looming figure that we never even see until book three and Zuko returns home. The thing with that, it feels like the genie is out of the bottle. Like I don't think you could replicate that mystery in live action, just because everyone and their mom knows who Ozai is. Like, I would have been interested to see them try and replicate it, but I genuinely don't think it would have worked. I think it works excellently in the animation. I don't think it's a rep I don't think you could ever replicate it. I don't. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. 
I don't know. And again, like, this is a matter of mediums. They have to cast him, right? So do they cast an actor and don't even show him? It's a bit of a weird thing. It, I think it's a mixture of practicality and a mixture of would it even work for a second time? So I'm sort of fine with this. Not entirely fine, but mostly fine. Uh... What is this? Okay, I, I we, we figured out one remix. We figured out one remix. We figured out a remix. Um, I don't think there is a, uh, I don't think there is a, whatchamacallit? Uh, the Northern Air Temple. Uh, I think this right here is the Mechanist and his son. I think they're meeting in Omashu. Because I saw them flying in Omashu and I was stunlocked. So, the Northern Air Temple, I think all happens in Omashu. This looks like Omashu. This is um this is the this, the Iro rescue scene. We know this very well. Yeah, there he is. All right. If the world is gonna have any chance, it's gonna need Aang. Looks so good. Looks so good. The Kyoshi Island. The cinematography in this is beautiful. Like the way they've done the sprawling shots, even the statue. Oh, it's so good. And th this is, th honestly, I think this is my favorite bit of the trailer. They actually just took the intro. They just took the intro and actually made it in the episode. I think this is Kiyoshi Island. <laughs> right. There goes the savior of the world. <laughs> we already talked about this. Frickin' Zuko. R trying to find Yang Chen. I think you're a bit late for that. I still think, like, it's probably Clay, right? This is probably Clay on his face. He looks so red here. <laughs> Look at him. He looks so red. <laughs> I don't know if this is, is if this is supposed to be the storm, or this is just... This might be, like, an establishing sequence to make Ozai a mega Chad. You know, he's ripped. We see him, like, flexing. And then he probably bends at someone. This right here. I don't think this is supposed to be the storm flashback. I don't. This could be Azula. This could be Ozai and Azula training, maybe. Something like that. I don't know. They don't actually know Aang is a child or even if he's a he. Yes, yes. Nothing about Aang is known, right? Because um, super early in book one, there's even talk about we're not even sure he was reborn into the Air Nomads. Or maybe he died with the Air Nomads and he's been reborn again. There's a bunch of talk about that lack of uncertainty. So, yes. This is good. This is good. It's one of my favorite moments in, uh, I think it's episode three, uh, where Aang, uh, Aang and Katara are talking, and Katara asks him, why didn't you tell us you were the Avatar? And Aang just says, uh, because I never wanted to be. You know, that, that's like a very powerful moment. I hope they nail that in here. You don't have to do this alone. You have me, Katara... And a flying ball of fur. What more do you need? <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> Look at him! Look at him! This is such a goofy little sh Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Alright, so, um, in one of my videos, blame One Piece for this. Uh, I named him Sure You accidentally, not Sure Shoe. This is a Sure Shoe. This is a Shurshu, not a Shiryu. A Shiryu is a swordsman in the series One Piece. This is a Shurshu, and he looks horrifying. The world needs you. The world this is probably the blue spirit, right? I hope Chopper looks as good as Momo. Um, I would say you could probably take this as an indication of what they're working with. But I think it's really, really hard to say, because I think Oppa also looks incredible. It might be like a case of where they allocate budget. I'm really not sure, right? Because I feel like with um, with One Piece, there was a lot more practical costs, because they were actually building the ships. This right here, that's freaking hay by. Bro, oh my god, look at it. That's freaking hay by. God damn. <laughs> Really Alright, so that's Kiyoshi Island. What are you doing here? 
kind of wish One Piece looked as good. I think One Piece had a lot of really, really good sprawling shots, but this is this is this is beautiful. Because like um with One Piece, uh, my favorite set of One Piece was the Baratier, and the Baratier is literally built, you know. So I think it's just a matter of where they're putting budget. With this, I don't think there's really a lot of practical building necessary, you know. Yeah, there he is. Uh, I forget his name. I'm really horrible with names, even with something like Avatar. Th he is flying in Omashu. So, this is basically confirmed. A remix happens that the Northern Air Temple, all of that story, is somehow rolled into Omashu. What I hope doesn't happen... I really, really hope this doesn't happen. I hope they don't take away the mechanist angle that he is working for the Fire Nation. Because I think that is really, really important. I feel like that little bit of ambiguity and him tipping there, you know, out of necessity for his son, I think that was really, really cool. <clears throat> looks like a movie. The shots are so clear. It looks so accurate, even if they go off on story. I told you, when I saw the first teaser, like, they were flexing. And now they're flexing even more. Obviously, I'm still very hesitant to say that this is going to be, like, perfect. But based on everything that they've showed us, I am very, very confident. It looks gorgeous. It looks incredible. That's the blue spirit. Avatar. And I'm gonna save the world. Whoops. With my friends. Yeah. What was that? What was this? Oh, that's the boomerang. And that's Boomy. All right, this is this is all Omashu. All right, so in the northern in the northern tribe, there is some sort of temple. It's not just out by the out by the little thing, because they're indoors. This is Katara versus Zuko. Wait, whoa, whoa, hold up. That looks badass. This looks badass. <laughs> Look at that. It's like literally vaporizing as it goes. Oh, that's so good. Okay, and this is Jet. And I like that they're actually just going for like anime logic. Like he's literally slicing at a fireball and it deflects. I like that. They're just embracing it. They're not trying to make it like super realistic. They're not trying to make it like needlessly complicated yes it's it's as it works in cartoons you can slice a fireball of course you can what do you think the sword was for bet on jet's death jet is death uh dead 100 percent. book two he dies no ambiguity whatsoever he might even be like impaled or something a hundred percent jet dies no two ways about it jet is dead in book two Where is this? This must be in the south, right? Oh, no, but this, this is the Northern Water Tribe. And it does look like a little shrine. So I wonder if there is... I wonder if there's an indoor area and an outdoor area. The tattoos are so cool, by the way. I love the tattoos. Look at that. It has like that Rava vibe. That's one good thing that came out of uh, Book 2 of Korra. The Rava design is beautiful. And I really, really like that they incorporated that in the tattoos. It's not just blue, it's like actually has decal. Look at that. That's so cool. Oh, can we please appreciate the Chaka Chaka motif? That's so good, I love it. I mean... 
I would have loved to see more character moments. Right. Because, like, this right here, this right here to me, tells me they know what they're doing. This, this specific scene right here tells me they know what they're working with. This. Right. There goes the same. Savior of the world. It's goofy. It replicates the comedy of the original where Aang is supposed to be a secret savior. You know, he's supposed to be this legend. No, he's just a goofy kid. He, like, <laughs> face plants into a statue. Because of course he does. Why wouldn't he? Right? Look at this. Bop. There we go, that's the Avatar. This gives me the most faith. This scene right here. Uh, we'll see about, like, their performances. There's nothing, like, that super sticks out to me. But I think they are playing their car uh, cards sort of close to the chest. Because uh, shots like this, I think this is the same exact shot we already got. Yeah, I wonder what this is. This right here. Uh, music is one thing I can already say is done better than One Piece. Uh, it feels like Avatar. Um, I love the One Piece music, but it's it's a rights thing, yes. Like, um, getting rights from Toei, because it's a Jap uh, Japanese thing, and it's because it's two, two entirely separate entities, it is much, much harder, right? So, yes. Music, I think, moving forward will, will always be the thing that, like, this will have. Um, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't think the original composer is involved, because but I know they are remastering the original tracks. Zuko's Agni Kai, that's what I think it is as well, but I'm not sure. I think this is the flashback during the storm, but I'm not sure. I'm not. Because I feel like in the storm it was kind of implied that he doesn't even fight back. You know? I don't know. And would his hair be this long? It looks like he has very, very long hair. I don't know if this is Zuko. To do this alone. This scene is so cute. Look at this. And look at the little op. Like, oh, look, look at his eye. This is a nice little scene. <laughs> I never noticed this. Look at look look at where his ear is. I never even thought about this. This is his ear. It feels like it in the animation always felt like it was higher up. Look at the fur though. Flying. Look at the detail on it. This is, this is my favorite screen. I'm using this as the thumbnail. It's not even close. Look at this. Okay, listen, we're going to do the same thing I did with One Piece. I'm going to put like... I'm like 80% confident. I'm, I'm very, very curious why they didn't give us more character moments. But we'll see. We'll see. Because like my favorite thing to come out of live action One Piece was Zeph. And Zeph was never even in the trailers. So, you know, the, the, I'm not worried. Um, things that we can spot right away. Like I said, clearly, uh, Kiyoshi Island is remixed. Right? Th this is changed. Uh, Omashu is also changed, because it seems like it's, uh, it's merged with, uh... Heibai looks so good. Heibai looks like something out of freaking Stranger Things, I love it. Omashu is changed, right? Because, because the, the mechanist is here. I assume, like, the Great Divide is cut entirely. I assume that's, like, the safe call. That looks so majestic. This is probably like a, like a whimsical introduction to the mechanist, like something just blows up in the background. All the vistas and all the sprawling shots are great. I love it. But yeah, it does seem like they're playing it close to the chest. This shot we've seen, this whole thing we've basically seen. I'm not someone who can stop the fire they're giving us very little new. So how are we feeling? How are we feeling? I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling really good. I see no red flags. I see no red flags. The only red flag is potentially things like the fortune teller and like the great divide being cut, but I'm not worried about that. Um, I think with a trailer like this, um, I think a uh, season two is guaranteed basically. Uh, I genuinely do. <clears throat> Cause I think like even, even, uh, even as eye candy, people will watch it. Uh, season two, I basically think is in the bang. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to jump the gun because obviously like Netflix, Netflix does look at retention statistics and everything. It's very, very important. Uh, but I think, like, um, I talked about this before. Uh, whenever I upload an Avatar video, I realize how many people there are who are waiting for Avatar content, but don't really talk about it online. Uh, I think with Avatar, there is... With Avatar, it's like an iceberg of an audience. And the one that engages with Avatar regularly is like the tip of the iceberg. There are so many people that are probably 
that are probably just going to watch this, like, same as One Piece, you heard people getting into One Piece for the first time. I feel like with Avatar, it's a matter of so many people rediscovering Avatar. And I think what happened um, with the original animation being put on Netflix uh, during COVID uh, was, like, the perfect example of that. Like, Avatar, a... How old is it now? It definitely hasn't been 20 years. However, however old it is, it was put on Netflix and it retained, like, the number one position for weeks. I think for numbers, there's genuinely nothing to worry about this. I think this trailer has sold. Casual audience is 100%. People who want to nitpick will obviously be harder to sell. That's why I, I, that's why I went through this trailer scene by scene. Uh, you know, I'm feeling very, very optimistic. Momo looks so goddamn good. <laughs> I love this. I love this shot so much. The bending movements uh, are amazing. The elements make sense with the uh, attack movement they are making. Yes. And this is something I feel like is incredibly important to keep in mind. That, like, with the uh, with the original animation, they always had... I always forget his name. But they had an actual martial arts expert, like, on contact at all times to choreograph fights. You know, if they if they manage to capture that authenticity of um, of martial arts, we might have something very, very special on our hands. Like... I, I said I said the scene, like the intro scene of Aang bopping into this is like the biggest thing that gives me hope. I'm not gonna lie. You know what gives me the biggest hope? The fact that they showed us Heibai, and Heibai is like the biggest nightmare creature of all time. Where is he? There he is. Th they showed us this, and they haven't shown us the face stealer. <laughs> Can you imagine what he looks like? He has to be in, right? Because it's like crucial during the siege on the north. Freaking the face stealer is gonna live in my nightmares again, all over again. Face stealer season one, yes, it's the end of season one. Uh, it's during the siege on the north. Uh, very last episodes. It's when Aang uh, goes into the spirit world. Uh, that's when Zuko yoinks him. Uh, I would assume maybe they've changed that though. Glad it's not. Uh, glad it's a show, not a movie. Three million percent. If they tried making it a movie, uh, I wouldn't even probably talk about it. Genuinely. There is no way to adapt a story like Avatar into a two-hour movie. There's just... No. It's not impossible. It's, it's not possible. Would Azula know archery? I mean, they're royals, right? Royals are usually trained in all sorts of martial arts and, and combat in general. So if they're going for that angle, and Azula is a prodigy and everything, I think it makes perfect sense. Even in something like Game of Thrones, right? Like, all the Starks were shooting bows. It's that sort of vibe. Also, um, if you remember one of the very, very first pictures we got... I said the armor looks She's a bit odd. Every... This looks much better. This looks infinitely better. This actually looks like armor. That I'm like, yeah, that's armor. Because one of the pictures they released, maybe it was the lens, maybe it was the lighting, I don't know. Um, it seemed like super glossy, shiny, and weird. This looks like proper armor. This is cool. <laughs> I can't get over the fact how red Iroh looks. <laughs> yeah, one, I wonder how the hell... What does the budget breakdown look like if all of these CGI creatures look so incredible? Look at this. This thing looks horrifying. Wait, hold on. Yes! Wait a minute. Wait just a damn minute. Why? Okay, we're, we're not watching. I'm out. We're not watching. We're not watching. We're not watching. That's it. Why is Sokka not in the Kyoshi Warrior uniform? This right here, this is Sokka. Who does he think he is? Where's his uniform? Where is it? Where is it? That's it. We're done. <laughs> We're done. We're not watching. Right? This is, this, is, this is make it or break it. I really hope it's just a case of them like uh, getting ready to leave and that's why he doesn't have it on. Because there should be a scene of him wearing it. There has to be. Right? I mean, come on. A school. Oh, and there's this club thingy. Oh, that was smooth. Look at this. Because yeah, this is all the same sequence, right? And then he takes over, he bops that guy, she's fighting the other dude, and they once again turn all around. Okay, that's good. He is wearing- what are you talking- no he's not. No, that's, that's the Water Tribe stuff. 
That's the water tribe stuff. Battle couple? Yes. <laughs> They're going at it. Wait, but he does have a fan. And there is a little bit of green. Wait, hold on. He's wearing the over armor. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, I think you're right, because he does have a fan. This right here. Oh, wait, it's crop top. You can't even see it. He has a fan in his hand. There he is. He has a fan. Right? I think that is the armor, because there is also a green bit right here. Because all of this is blue. And their shoulder pads are different. The ones. I don't know. This shot is beautiful. This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Oh, it looks so good. No face paint though? Yeah. Yeah. I love how... I love just how many different settings there are, right? We have like the air temples. We have like these entirely... Oh, that's the fire nation. We have this, which is just like mists of Pandaria, these pillars, I love it. It's like, oh, this looks, this looks, this looks so, so good. Looks so good. So good. I can see people still talking about the scar, because it is a bit small. The scar is a bit small, and he does have the eyebrow. I wonder if they... I wonder if they experimented, uh, experimented with getting rid of his eyebrow. Because that must have come up during conversations. Maybe it just looked weird. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, yeah, I think in live action, imagine like, because he has the ponytail, right? Imagine him not having hair, him obviously being clean shaven, and him missing one, one, uh, one uh, eyebrow. I think he would have looked quite odd. They probably tried it. It probably looked a bit weird. It's probably why they didn't do it. Yeah, I, I want to see how these scenes flow, you know? It's like the biggest thing. Who can stop the fire? <laughs> Thought he was waking up. But no. no. It would have been better? I don't know. I don't know. I think, like, um, it's a matter of um, not doing things to, like, mess with your audience too much in the sense of... If it's always goofy on screen, then um, I think it like detracts from the show more than it more than it benefits it. You know, it's it's the same reason why I keep saying like, please don't meme uh, iconic scenes in media because it just like like for example, when I watch Breaking Bad now and I see all the memes, like I'm sorry, I, I just can't detach the memes from the show. I'm just like, ha ha, it's the meme, it's funny, right? So. If it was that, I don't know, I don't know. I think he would have just looked a little bit weird. Alright, I'll make a very bold prediction. I think, like, um, we're good. I, I think we're good. Uh, Aang's actor is gonna grow up pretty fast. They better get started on the next season. Yes. Yes. You, you are one million percent right. And you know what makes that even harder? There is no way you can fit in, like, a, a year past in Avatar. Because the point of Aang's story is that he learns all the four elements in a single, like, uh, six months, right? From the winter solstice to eventually Sozin's Comet's return. It's like six months. And two years for someone of his age, that's a long time. That is one thing I'm genuinely scared about. Because with Stranger Things, it's funny, you know? Like, with Stranger Things, the situation is very, very funny because they're basically- they're, they're adults now, you know? It looks weird. Uh, but, um, with Aang, it's very true. How old is the actor? Is he, like- I don't know how old the actor is. Um, because I think, like, if you put pictures of me, um, side by side when I was 13 and 15. I was going to say I looked very, very different, but I think if you put up a picture of me when I was 16 and now, I don't look that different. <laughs> Ang actor, um, Netflix. Gordon, Gordon, Gordon. Uh, cause you raise a very, very good point. I feel so old whenever I see people that are born like 2009. 15 to 17, I don't think it's that bad. But that's assuming they all get it done in, like, three years. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. I, I think that will be the biggest thing. Uh, I think if they get a book two... Uh, let me put it this way. I think if they get a book two, book three is guaranteed because there is so little left to do. You know, it, it feels like a weird thing to say, right? Like, what do you mean there's little to do? This, this show costs, like, a hundred million dollars. There's a lot to do, you know? Uh, but in the sense of... You don't want to uh, have like an incomplete series because it diminishes the value of rewatching it, right? So I think if they do book two, 
comparatively, it's like, well, we've already invested so, uh, so much resources into it. We might as well finish it so that eventually there is rewatch, uh, rewatch value for it. Right? Like, even if the views slip, which I don't think they would. I don't think they would. Even if they do, though, this is not One Piece. This doesn't have a thousand episodes. This only has three seasons. Uh, and if they do it right, I don't see any reason why they're... Like, if season one is good and they do a second season, I don't see any reason why season three should su suffer. If anything, season three should be the easiest to adapt because season three is when the story, like, really becomes linear and focused. Uh, you know? That's, like, one of the things they talked about in interviews. Albert Kim did. Uh, the changes made to book one is so that it, like, fits a TV show. Because uh, book one in the in the animation is, like, Adventure of the Week, you know? And with things like uh, Omashu, it's clear they're doing that already without trying to, like, take anything away or add anything, which is very good. Very good. Maybe they change the story of season one. Um, yeah, so that, like, the comet arrives longer. I don't want that to be the case. I really don't. I don't. Because I feel like that diminishes, um, like, Aang's story and the entire rush against the Sozin's, uh, against Sozin's Comet. Uh, it would be, like, a very, very easy fix, but I think it's a fix that has a lot of ramifications. Because three years is a long time, especially if the long-lost Avatar suddenly returns to the world. Uh, I think that's one of those things that, like, it's a very, very easy fix uh, on the surface, but when you start breaking it down, like, okay... If he, if he was undercover for six months, it makes much more sense that, like, Fire Lord himself, you know, like, uh, literally Ozai wasn't like, you know what? Why am I waiting for this guy? I'm just going to try and hunt him down myself. He's, like, the only threat to me right now. That makes sense because it's such a, such a, like, small span of time, right? Three years. I don't know. I'd rather them just try to do it as fast as possible. And even if there are, like, a few years in between where he does get a little bit older... Um, technically with book three, like, the drawings are a little bit different. They do look, like, a little bit older. Uh, maybe it's just a matter of, like, um, like, a perception, I guess? Uh, because, you know, Aang does get the hair and everything. I think he does look a little bit older by the end. Probably not. It's probably, like, an, it's probably like an illusion. Uh, but, you know. Anyway. Um, I think it'll, I think I'll call it a day today. I think I've said basically everything I have to say. I am very, very optimistic. I'm not even using the word cautiously optimistic because I think it's a silly thing to say at this point. Uh, I feel like I feel like saying cautiously optimistic is like you, you you know. I like to say it myself, but I feel like it means nothing. It's like what does cautiously optimistic mean? I am optimistic, and that is rare coming from me. It really is. Visually, it is stunning. The bending effects look great. Um, I want to see more martial arts, obviously, uh, which they didn't really show us that much. It feels like they are once again uh, flexing things. Azula is using a bow. What if they turn into a non-bender? They... That's not even a concept worth entertaining. Of course they wouldn't make her a non-bender. She's using a bow because she's a royal. <laughs> this is literally the only reason. Of course they wouldn't make her a non-bender. That'd be the most nonsensical change known to man. <laughs> he looks so cute. Can, can I get one of these? Can I get one of these? Can, can you have a lemur as a pet? It's probably, it's probably no. <laughs> I want one of these. Where, where can I get one of these? Uh, like I said, February... Wait, is it 22nd or 25th? I think it's 22nd, right? It's 22nd. 25th, I think, is The, the Walking Dead. Yes, 22nd. February 22nd. I'll be back right here on Twitch and on YouTube to watch all of it in a single sitting. Um, I hope they drop it like they did with, uh, with One Piece. One Piece released like 10 a.m. my time. So I woke up, I ate breakfast, and I watched One Piece until dinner time. It was one of the best days of 2023. So with 2024, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to wake up. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to say it right now. I don't care what time they drop it. I'm going to watch all of it in a single sitting. Even if it drops 3 a.m. my time, I'm watching the whole thing in a single sitting. Clip it and ship it. I'll be here, and we will watch. We will watch all of it. We will talk all of uh, about all of it. Uh, I'll probably take notes because a uh, hundred percent. I'm going to make something about this on the main channel. Uh, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. <laughs>